So here it is, my late 1970s Putsch bike. It's a Putsch Elegance, which is a bit of a funny name really. Um, and Putsch is a, um, it's an Austrian brand and I was quite drawn to them because they build the, um, well they used to build the uh, the moped, one of the mopeds. Most of the mopeds are actually built in France, but the Putsch ones built in Austria were a bit like the um, the French mobilette. So this um, is just a normal three-speed bicycle. It's got Sturmey Archer hub on the back there. And what I particularly like about this one is the fact that it's got a um, dynamo hub just in here, which still works. So I paid, I was quite lucky really, I paid 40 pounds for this bike off eBay. Um, it's in remarkable condition for its age. I put these cream tires on these Schwalbe Delta Cruisers, which seem to roll quite nicely. Um, so the ones that were on before were the old school Rally Record tires, which which were okay, but I just wanted some cream tires to go on it. If you wonder why it hasn't got any mud guards at the moment, I'm currently sorting those out. So. Um, second lot of Nitromores paint stripper on them at the moment so I'm hoping that this lot um, gets all the paint off and the idea being um, I'm going to stick some primer on them and I'm actually going to spray them um, like a very light brown colour so the kind of theme I'm trying to get with this is um, this this colour frame here is like a um, dark brown reddish dark brown colour um, and we've got the cream tyres, light brown mud guards, so I'm kind of going for a sort of coffee and cream sort of look, um, which kind of coincides with what I believe cycling is all about, the whole social aspect. I'm a big fan of how the Dutch do it. So it's still got its original putsch, let's see if I can focus that, there we go. These original putsch handlebar grips which are quite nice so they've got the little reflectors in the end there and then you've got the three speed Sturmey Archer hub there and a bell that was built let's see if I can focus that by CG Marshall in Beaconsfield which is just outside West London so I really, yeah as I was saying really like these three speed um, old bikes because they just go really really smoothly when they're set up right and they're so simple to maintain as well. Um, these three speed hubs um, they don't derail your chain as much as a derailer gear does and all you've got to do every now and then is just top up the oil in this little reservoir here um, where this cap is. Really easy to adjust and to adjust these you just put it into third gear and then just take up the slack in this cable by rotating this barrel and then using the um, the lock nut there as well. Uh, what more can I say about it? Not a lot really. Um, oh the lights, yeah I was just after your suggestions actually so um, the lights work, they work very well but I put a um, I put an LED bulb in um, this front light here um, because with two filament bulbs in, one in the front and one in the back, it takes up a lot of... filament bulbs are very inefficient by today's standards. So I stuck an LED bulb in the front here, which works perfectly well, and it really throws a lot of the power to the rear light, because the LED bulb hardly uses any power at all. However, we have a little problem in that um, when I'm cycling along with the LED bulb, it's a bit like being at an early 90s rave, because the... Um, it just basically constantly, it's like a strobe light basically, especially when you're going quite slowly. Um, so I'm investigating putting some sort of capacitor within. Um, I don't know how I do that or where to put it. So maybe if you're uh, familiar with this sort of thing, maybe leave me a comment um, in the comments box below. That'd be much appreciated.
that's better. So here is the finished article. Um, yeah, so after a bit of minor restoration work on the mud guards and the chain guard, it's looking quite a bit better. Well, in my opinion, it's looking quite a bit better than it did before. So let's just come and have a little look and see what I've done to it. So this um, <laughs> this colour is Ford Tuscan Beige. It was featured on um, Ford Capri's Mark II Escorts and Cortinas in about sort of 1980, 1981. So I thought it would be a perfect colour for um, this bicycle. So it contrasts quite nicely with the, um, the brown and the gold here. So it kind of gives it that sort of coffee and cream look to it, especially with this white um, tail that I've put on the back here. So I've got an extra LED light here. This is a, um, oh, what's it called, an MPD Fender Bot. I had to order it in. I bought it quite a few years ago, actually. I had to order it in from um, the USA because I really couldn't find anything that was really suitable for these old bikes um, that didn't look like a really modern lighting system. It looks fairly modern, but it kind of is in keeping with the style of the bike. So I managed to clean up a few mechanical things as well. So if we look here, um, this is the good old Sturmy Archer Dino Hub, which has cleaned up really, really nicely. And it still works. Um, so it powers these lights here and the one on the front. Um, I have, I think I said this before, put an LED in the front there. So um, it's a bit flickery at the moment. So I'm going to have to devise some sort of capacitor system to keep that light shining nicely. But yeah, love, absolutely love this um, three-speed hub on here. And the gear ratios on this are surprisingly good. Yes, it doesn't have the, the speed or the um, range of gears like a 21, 27 speed um, road bike would have, or a touring bike rather, um, but it just doesn't need it. Um, you're not going to be climbing, um, you're not going to be climbing Mont Blanc on this bike. You know, it's mostly for sort of town riding, that sort of thing. Although I could probably go quite a long way on here. It would be quite good. So let's just have a look over here. I'm going to have to find some way of um, disguising this wire. This wire here powers the front light and it's, it looks a little bit ugly just hanging down like that. But one way of helping would be to put a pump into these lugs just here. So at least that will disguise some of it. It's just this bit here. It just looks a bit, yeah, looks a bit naff. So we have to do something about that at some point. And here's the front light. Um, this you can see me hi <laughs> this was really pitted um, when I um, when I started sort of working on this bike and I found the best way um, after watching a bit of advice on YouTube the best way of actually bringing this chrome up and the same went for the handlebars as well um, you still see a few marks on them it's nowhere near as bad as they were bit of aluminium foil screw it up and then just rub it on the chrome bits um, Honestly, I couldn't believe how well the chrome actually came up. And I did exactly the same on these pedal cranks here. Um, these were quite, there's quite a lot of surface rust on these, um, as you'll probably see in the, the before video. Um, but I got a bit of aluminium foil, just rubbed it on there, and um, yeah, came up really, really nicely. So I was really, really happy about that. And um, what else did I do? I took apart the front hub, took the bearings out, re-greased it, cleaned it all up, re-greased it, put it all back together again. It's quite a fine art to um, doing up the wheel um, after taking it apart because you've got to do it tight enough so it doesn't wobble from side to side, which it doesn't. But if you do it too tight, it won't spin freely enough and it will uh, cause too much drag when you're cycling along. So it's got to spin freely but not wobble at the same time. So it's really, you've, you've, got, to get the, you've got to get the hub bolts in exactly the right place um, to make that work. So it's a little bit tricky, but um, yeah, once you get used to it, um, it's fairly easy. So what's left to do? Not a lot really. Um, thinking of putting some sort of retro sticker on here at some point I don't know what um, haven't decided yet 
I would like to do something with this saddle though. Um, I don't want to get rid of the saddle because it's really comfortable. As you can see, it's got springy bits underneath there. So, and the, the, you can't really see, but the saddle itself is actually mattress sprung as well. So um, it does a really nice job of um, absorbing the bumps. But I was thinking of maybe making some sort of funky 70s cover for it and then just spraying it with um, some stuff called Fabsil, which is actually what is used for waterproofing fabric tents. So I think that that could probably work and have some sort of drawstring system underneath it to, you know, um, I didn't really want to take apart and recover the saddle because this is, this is perfectly fine. So yeah, um, not too funky. Obviously it's got to be in keeping with the colour of the bike, you know, in, in reasonably good taste, even by my standards. So um, yeah, just something just to jazz up this seat a little bit because it's plain black seat, you know, it's not particularly interesting. But um, yeah, I'll update you probably in another video um, when I come to do that. But yep, here it is. Um, apologies for my grass, it's a little bit patchy and needs cutting at the moment, but um, we'll get there. Yeah, that's the Putsch Elegance um, Semi Refurbished. I didn't want to do the whole frame, I was going to, but I actually quite like the look of the frame as it is. And the other thing is, I probably wouldn't get these um, decals anywhere. I mean, they do do put um, decals on eBay, but um, they're a different colour. I've never actually seen this colour, so I'd rather just keep it as it is. The frame's in really good condition. Mechanically, the bike's in good condition, so I just didn't want to um, potentially spoil anything by stripping the paint off and then finding I couldn't um, make it look um, good again. So there we are. Um, there it is. It lives in the shed out of the rain. Chain's oiled again now, so um, it goes like an absolute dream. Now I've greased that front hub. I've cleaned the chain and re-greased it. That's a bit of a fine art in itself because you don't want to... Um, obviously you need to oil the chain <laughs> otherwise the bike will just be really really sluggish and won't be smooth at all and it will cause damage to all the moving parts but the problem is if you over oil the chain it attracts all the dirt from the road and um, it basically creates like, this horrible grinding pace you can actually do more damage to a bike's components by putting too much oil on the chain um, so the best way to do it is just actually um, grease at each individual link then I just let it sit for about an hour Then I just backpedal, I can't at the moment because the kickstand's on backpedal it, get it through the I was going to say components, there's only one <laughs> there's only one cog on the back there um, and then actually just get a cloth and just wipe off any excess oil just to stop, um, just stop it attracting the road dirt so that's it, that's the bike and um, I'll be keeping these lovely Schwab Delta Cruiser cream tyres on. When they eventually wear out, I may get some nice brown ones for it, because that would go quite well. But for now, coffee and cream it is. Um, I'll be hopefully doing many happy miles on it. Thank you for watching. OK, so I'm just going to take it for a quick ride. Here we go. <laughs> Gear, um, cruising along rather nicely. Yes, it's not going to get any results on Strava, but who cares? I'm not competing, I only use it to track my mileage.
see why life used to be so much more laid back. If everybody had a bike like this, I'm pretty sure the world would be a better place. <laughs>